Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Thanks Slimline card with some florals and vases all new products from Waffle Flower. This is their last release of 2021, and I was able to combine, let's see, one, two, three, four, six products, components from six different things. So whether it be stamps, stencils, or dies for my card. So I have a bunch of things here. Um, we're going to start by kind of doing a stencil background. Then we're going to ink blend our large sentiment and some vases. And finally, we're going to color in some florals with Copic markers. So I'm doing ink blending with Distress Oxide inks, but first I kind of wanted to show you my thought process and the, pro the products that I pulled for that. So that's kind of what I've done here. And I love starting with a blank canvas and then we're just gonna kind of build from there. Another thing is the new Tiny Dot stencil. First of all, any Tiny Dot, I am here for it, is amazing but normally you might not think of using a regular six by six stencil for a slimline card. You don't have to have a slimline stencil, especially with an easy pattern like a tiny dot or polka dot or anything like that. So I'm actually going to just ink up part of my slimline base and then I will move down a bit or move the stencil down a bit, pardon, and keep ink blending. I also decided to do an ombre effect with my polka dots. So I started with a little tumbled glass, then broken china, then mermaid lagoon, and we're gonna finish with prize ribbon and chipped sapphire. This is very um, similar, and here you can see I'm lining it up to be able to ink the rest of my panel. This is going to kind of mimic what I'm gonna do for that large thanks that I'll be using for my sentiment. I don't know about you guys, but next to birthday cards, thank you cards are the second most common card I create and or need and i love the oversized thank you from this release i think this is probably going to be a very popular die set you get the thanks that i'm using here and you also get a thank you again they are both large sized so if you want to use them for a slimline or a larger size card they work but you can use this on a standard card as well this large thanks would work on a regular um you know, horizontal A2 card. Thank you would work either way, portrait or landscape. So definitely keep that in mind. I did die cut my thanks from 110 pound weight Nina Smooth White cardstock, and I'm inking it up with the same colors of ink that I just used for my polka dots. So it has this really pretty ombre effect of some of my favorite blue inks from Tim Holtz. Um, I absolutely love that there are so many options. So it's beautiful like this, but we are going to even take it up a notch here in a minute, but let's go ahead and set this stuff aside and ink blend our vases. I love blue vases. I don't even know what it is, why I like them so much, but I do. Um, I used to have some, they don't really fit my decor anymore, so I don't have any any longer but I love these so I used mermaid lagoon and prize ribbon which is one of my very favorite color combinations for this first vase um, also quickly this vase is from the stems die I'm combining vases from a couple of different sets so I want to make sure and mention that also the the special delivery die has some additional vases that are a little bigger sized I'm not using the vases from that but I am going to use the tag this vase right here is from the vase variety die and it has a little cute crosshatch design to it and that's some tumbled glass and chipped sapphire combined for that one really cute that set has five vases so you get a lot of options and then finally this last vase is again from the stems die so the first and last are both from the stems die this is some chipped sapphire and then i'm going to just blend a little prize ribbon into this so there are all of my components. Now, before I start coloring in any of my florals, I know I'm gonna need a ton of dry time for this next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply glossy accents to my vases. Um, 
I thought the gloss on the vases would look amazing and I absolutely love this, but just keep in mind, it will require some dry time. I'm actually using my waffle flower packaging. I didn't get any glossy accents on it, but I figured if I did, I could kind of chip it off easily. So I just looked for some kind of heavy packaging um, to protect my work surface, I guess, because I knew if I got it on my uh, self-healing mat, it would be hard to get off. I've done that before, um, and I didn't want to get it on my stencil mat. And I'm just doing a nice thin coat all over my vases. And all along, my plan was to also apply glossy accents to the large thanks. It makes it a showstopper. It really, really highlights the inking. And I have to even go into my stash and get a new glossy accents because I used up everything in that little, that little container or little bottle, I guess I should say. Once this is dry, it's so it's completely clear because right now it looks a little milky. When it's dry, it's completely clear and it looks amazing. This is really easy to do for a large die cut like this. Um, sometimes with something thinner, it can be a little trickier. I still love the look, but for this, it was very easy to apply the glossy accents. And again, I'm going to do this and I'm gonna set it aside to dry. I actually touched mine a little too soon, especially the vases, but I think they ended up being all right. Um, I was just in a hurry to finish my cards, but you know, that is fine. I think ultimately if I could have given it a couple hours, that would have been the best, but I only gave it like 40, 45 minutes, I think. I am going to just take whatever ink is left on my blending brush and I'm going to ink the edges of my panel a little bit. I felt like it just needed a little bit more inking, so I'm just going around the edges. I didn't add any extra ink to my blending brush. And I should mention these are the Waffle Flower Blend waffle flower blending brushes and I use mine for my distress oxide inks. It makes it really easy to know which ink blending brushes are which um, because I use those only for oxides. Now I'm going to take our stems dye florals and color them with Copic markers. I have listed the colors I'm using across the top of the screen as well as down in the description box here on YouTube and on my blog post. There is a link to that in the description below. So definitely check that out if you're interested at all. One of my very favorite things to do is to color in white die cuts. You can get so much more depth and dimension than just ink blending. So this is a great example of a lot of ink blended elements, especially the vases that are gonna go with these combined with Copic markers. And it really does give a beautiful result. I used a lot of different green color combinations. This is G43 and 46 for the kind of rose image. And then I'm gonna put a nice base of R35 down, and then we're gonna go in with er, er. How about R? Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> uh, R39 and R37, and I'm going to kind of draw in some petals. I kind of had a little misstep there, but I think I'm able to fix it. And I like it, it's not perfect. I'm not looking for perfect, I just want the hint of color. I also am using a scrap of white paper underneath where I'm coloring to protect my work surface. Again, I've switched from using a glass mat, at least temporarily, to a self-healing mat underneath. This is the Alta New self-healing mat, and I didn't want to get ink all over this. I'm not exactly sure um, if I would take any of the grid lines off of the mat if I try to clean it with a I don't want to use an abrasive cleaner, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So uh, I just thought I'd protect my work surface with a little scrap piece of paper. My next color combination is BG90, 93, and 96. This is going to be a little bit more of a blue-green uh, designated by the BG in front of it here. And I really try to incorporate several different color combinations for a lot of added interest because there's a lot of greenery here and a lot of greenery on purpose. I only want hints of color. Um, the rose definitely is a focal point. 
but the rest of it just little hints there's gonna there's some yellow which is bright and pretty and then there is a little purple as well something to note is my florals are going to stick up higher than my card this is probably a hand deliverable card even a lot of times you can get by with some stuff sticking off the top of your card a little bit um with a slim line because the envelopes are a little bit bigger but these are going to stick up too tall i do want to mention that because i know a lot of times i get asked how do you, how would you mail this I would either put this in a bubble mailer with, or I would put it in with a gift that I'm sending someone or something similar, probably not a thank you card, but uh, I would probably put it in a bubble mailer or I would hand deliver this one just to be on the safe side. You could definitely trim down your stems a bit, like the rose probably would be fine. Um, if I had maybe trimmed off some of the leaves on this first one, I could definitely tuck that down a little lower. Same goes for the yellow flowers. So keep that in mind. I didn't mind it. I kind of liked the height. So I went ahead and went for it. I have a recipient in mind for this card. So that's part of the reason. But I just want to make note of that so you guys know. Now I'm going to kind of lay everything out. I did let these mostly dry. You will see there might be some finger marks, but they do tend to smooth out because the glossy accents is still drying. Those were the first three images I colored. I should also mention I used YG91 and 95 for that last little green sprig. But I need more color, don't you guys think? Um, as I was looking at this, I thought, well, I think I need a couple more. And I don't want to do four. I want to do five for an odd number of stems. So I chose this next one. We're going to color in the stem with the BG90 93 96 and then the florals we're going to color in with yr 31 and 38 because yellow and blue is always a good idea i think and then our last little stem we will talk about here when we get to it but i really do like the pop of yellow here the base of all of my florals is yr 31 And then we're just going to blend in a little Y38. And I love this. This is also a nice little break from holiday cards. I don't know about you guys. I love creating holiday cards and obviously there's still plenty to come. Um, we're just going to be starting December tomorrow, but it is nice to be able to create something else a little bit. Um, I hate to say regular, but something just kind of an everyday design. I love it. So I love my yellow flowers, but I definitely need something else. So I'm playing around with these stems dies, trying to figure out what I want to use. And I like this little one. We're going to use YG91 and 95 to color in the greenery. Again, just kind of mixing up my greenery. And then I'm gonna take BV31 and 34, which are some blue violet colors. So it's gonna have a little bit of a purple flare to it. It'll be pretty subtle, but I love it. And we're just gonna kind of, I do put like lay down the color with my purple on all these little buds. But then with the BV34, I'm gonna do more of like a little dot technique. I'm not really gonna blend. And that's all there is to that and it is so pretty i'm trying not to like press in oh and i just totally put my fingernail into that it smooths out pretty well i think there's a slight mark left but i feel like in vases often you get some of those like little bubbles and things sometimes imperfections in the vases so that's what we're going to say is happening with the vases that i touched too soon I've got my three and a half by eight and a half inch slimline card base here. I did trim my background to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter to leave a nice little white border all the way around. You could also use a slimline die if you have something like that. I just trimmed mine today. Then I'm going to glue the thanks to the outline. Um, I should mention that the oversized thank you comes with outlines for both the thanks and the thank you which I love. And 
and I'm just gonna put that on there really quickly. We are gonna pop this whole thing up with foam adhesive, but we are going to figure out our vases first. I'm gonna lay the thanks out, and then I'm going to glue my florals to the back of each vase. Now, I don't wanna pop the vases up because the florals are pretty delicate and trying to pop those up will be aggravating at best. <laughs> so I want those glued directly to the card base. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and do that. Now, I missed filming this part. This little tiny tag is from the special delivery die. This is an amazing die set. I'm gonna be doing something else with this later on. And then I stamped a love you from the special delivery sentiments, which is made to work with the labels and the tag that come in the special delivery die set. I love these. These can work with or without uh, those dies, by the way. They're really great sized little sentiments. And I die cut the tag from white. I stamped the love you with some prize ribbon and then I tied it to the stem in this vase with a little twine from my stash. I know I'm probably gonna get asked about this twine because it's super thin. You guys, I've had this twine for probably 10 plus years. I don't have a source for it, I'm sorry. Um, but any you know thin little twine, I would check like a hobby and craft store for something like that. In fact, I'm about out. I'm completely out of the white. I have some of this natural color left, which were the two most popular colors. Um, I really wish someone would come out with this because the little thin skinny twine is what I love. It works really great for card making. Um, I just like little tiny skinny things like that. Now we're gonna tuck the rest of our florals in the other two vases, which each of the remaining two have two stems each. And I actually positioned this one too close. I pull it, I pu end up pulling it up a little bit because I think that's just too close. It gets lost. Um, I need to move it over because I have plenty of room over here to the right. So I did pick it up pretty quickly, but I think there's maybe a little smudge. I think I'm able to hide most of the fact that I end up moving that because I put, messed around with that other floral for quite a bit before I realized, you know, hey, I don't think that looks good. I think we're good now. We'll put some adhesive on the back of this one, glue it down. I'm gonna put foam adhesive on the back of the thanks and pop it up. I'm gonna make sure and not put foam adhesive underneath the like second half of the letter S so that it lays over the vase just a little bit very nicely. You don't wanna put foam adhesive there or it's not gonna lay correctly. And that is it. Super, super simple, but such a pretty card design. Um, you could switch that out for a birthday sentiment, a hello sentiment. Waffle Flower has lots of other sentiments that would work here. Um, you could do a whole set of thank you cards. I know thank you cards have been something that's, or gift card sets, actually not thank you cards, but gift card sets are something that have been highly requested. I think these products would actually work to make gift card sets very nicely. So lots of fun ways to use that. Please be sure to check out the entire release. I do have it linked on my blog. Um, this is the last release for 2021 from Waffle Flower, so be sure to check it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Thanks Slimline Floral Vases card featuring waffle flower stamps, dies, and stencils. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring waffle flower products that you might be interested in. A huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. Thank you guys so, so much. If you would like to join Patreon, please click the link below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.